Hello everybody, I'm Pearl of Wisdom, but you already know that, right? Because you're all subbed up and stuff. And there was a whole bunch of signings in the NHL. We're going to talk about it. I haven't even, I just knew that they happened. I'm going to look. I haven't even really dug into it too much. And it's like a reaction because people like the reaction videos, don't they? Yeah. So I'm going to react. I'm going to like truly react. I'm going to be, watch. Do you watch the reaction? Oh my. There will be reaction. And there will be frolic. Yes, there will be later on today. Well, right now, of course, but even more frolic is coming up. NHL Pearl of Wisdom Show, the NHL Pearl of Wisdom Show, from 3 to 5 Eastern, 5 days a week during the week. Go check it out. Sub yourself up, man. You got to go there. You can be part of making videos, too. We just made a video on bounce back players on this live stream. Yeah. Not kidding. I said, who's the bounce back players from every team? And they were just like that. I don't even know how they got their mouth like that, but they did it. And then they went, yeah, these are the bounce back players. And I went and did a video about it and we had lots of fun and you got to go sub because you're going to enjoy it too. Okay. Let's look at the signings. Steel Flyers All Sports Network, by the way. Go check it out. If you like four major sports and the teams and teams within those four major sports, you will enjoy Steel Flyers All Sports Network. www.steelflyers.com. It's the best there. I said it. Okay. First one. Cal Peterson. He's not the big one. I know what you're all waiting for, but it's coming. Don't worry, but it's still pretty big. Cal Peterson. Now, I just look, I just took a... Okay, Cal Peterson's Cal salary cap will be $5 million a year. $5 million starting 2022 to 2024-25. He is, he is 26 already. So this is good. They're buying out free agency years of Cal, Mr. Peterson. And I don't know what... I haven't even heard what other people think of this deal, but I think it's fantastic. Um, look at Cal Peterson's numbers here. He had a 0.924 in 11 games in 2018. That was his first, first year in the, in the league. Then he, he, he uh, played in the AHL on a bad Ontario rain team and, and people were not paying attention to him, but I was hearing murmurs and murmurs and murmurs. That's right. Murmurs. They were just like, I think that's a murmur. Mur, 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 like that. I was hearing it and I couldn't understand what they were saying. But apparently they were talking about how great Cal Peterson was going to be. And um, so then he came and he played eight games, um, put a point nine two two. And last year he had his first real big season in 289 and a point nine one one. Now the numbers are whatever. But if you're an L.A. Kings fan and you've been watching Cal Peterson, there are some times when you just see goaltenders and go, that guy's going to rock. Like, and he is one of those guys. He's super quick. He's, uh, he's a big dude, right? 6'1", 185. Okay, not one of the biggest goaltenders in the league. But he looks like he can uh, – takes up a lot in net. And his reflexes are absolutely fantastic. He always seems to be in position. He's got an amazing attitude. I think it's I think it's a pretty darn good deal when you consider that they bought out two years of his free agency. And I just love the way he looks in the net. The guy just screams number one goaltender to me. Tell me what you guys think, LA Kings fan. Did you like the deal? I think there's a lot of people out there that's going to say, well, he didn't really play enough. He shouldn't get so much money. Um, and I guess you could make a case for that. But sometimes you just want to make sure you keep a guy, you know. Um, the new deal, by the way, I don't think it has. I wanted to look at that too. Where is the new deal? They should have it here. Back. I don't think it has a no trade clause or anything like that. Usually goaltenders don't get that. So, no, there's no 
no trade clauses or anything of that nature, at least for now. So if it doesn't pan out, I suppose they can move on from them, but I'm pretty positive it's going to pan out because I really, I just really love the guy. I, I think he's fantastic. And I think it's part of the reason why I'm so bullish on the LA Kings. Uh, Alex Stelic not expected to play this season. He's having heart murmurs, a heart condition and stuff. Um, unfortunate. Um, I don't know how much he would have got really got in anyways with uh, Koskinen. Well, maybe a lot. So <laughs> that's, that's really bad news for the Edmonton Oilers. They could use all the goaltending help that they could get. Buffalo Sabres, Rasmus Dahlin. And they just signed him. Okay, look at this contract. I skimmed over this contract. It's three million with a two million dollar signing bonus this year. So they're giving him like two million right out of the gates. To here you go, calm down, dude. Fill your pockets with some scratch right now. You can go get your house. All that. That would be great, eh? Just get a contract where you can just buy your house outright, and uh, you're set. Five point eight million next year and seven point. 2 million. Now, the thing about this deal is that they are going to have to give him a qualifying offer at the end of the 2023-24 season of, a, of just over 7.2 million. So basically, what they're doing for Dahlin is saying, we, we totally believe in you. And I think there's something else to do with this contract, to tell you the honest truth. Um, he was a first overall pick, as we all know. And as it says in the, uh, the uh, article here, he hasn't become the franchise-changing cha savior that many Sabres fans were hoping for. And you could say maybe the Sabres themselves were hoping for. But... Has any player ever become what they're supposed to for the last seven years of the for the Buffalo Sabers? Um, this contract for me kind of says they didn't really like. According to his numbers, let's look at Rasmus Dahlin's numbers: forty-four points, forty in fifty-nine games. Those are really good numbers, by the way, for a young defenseman. But as we all know, Rasmus Dahlin has not been the great, greatest at uh, playing defense in the NHL. But he's super, super, super young. He's been put in a very difficult situation. And then he had a, just an absolutely deplorable year last year defensively. Forget about the minus 36. I'm not – I mean, it is important plus minus. I still think it is. But his overall stat, fancy stats – and I'm not a fancy stat guy. I've got guys that I – trust that I listen to um, without falling asleep. <laughs> it's important, okay? There, I have some guys I listen to, like Peyton on the radio. Go check him out. Peyton on the radio. He's freaking, he's got his own channel. Exciting guy who does fancy stats in a way that you makes you just not want to, like, nod off. And he's really good. Um, he his his uh, overall courses and all that kind of stuff like that were not good either. And this to me, this contract to me, by the Buffalo Sabers is set up to say, a we believe in you, and b we know we've let you down. We're gonna we're gonna make give you a qualifying offer of over seven million dollars. Like when that's how much we believe in you, that we believe you're gonna be an over seven million dollar. Uh, player in three years. Um, this is Adams, by the way. Adams is saying, because we're going to do better for you and we believe that you're going to do very well. I, I think this is a, the, the kind of contract they need to do. Um, you could even say it's an overpay, six million for the next three years, really. I mean, he his numbers don't suggest necessarily that he can make six million for his defense his defensive numbers, uh, not from last year. You could have probably tried to, you know, play around with them and bring them down as low as possible according to numbers and all that kind of stuff like that. But you want to do that with your franchise defenseman, and he still is that. 
uh, coming up right now when you're trying to build confidence in your organization and bring some positive energy into a Sabres team that has not had any of it basically for the last couple of years. I don't see any way that around this kind of contract that they did for him. I think it was the right thing to do. And I think that Darlene's going to crush it. I really do. I mean, I remember watching him in Europe before he got drafted and you were just like, holy crap, this guy's going to be incredible. Um, his numbers have not been that bad, but he has not turned into the player yet that he for sure looked like you. It's not like it was like, oh, you know, he could be really good. He looked like a guy that was going to be absolutely unbelievable. Anything less than very good was a disappointment, and it is, and I put it more on the organization than I do on Darlene, and I think this contract kind of reflects that. So, um, good for them for owning up, I think, in their own little way. I believe that that's what they did. They're sort of owning up that we need to do better and we're going to do better for you. So here you go. You got Owen Power coming up too. And you got a guy like Owen Power who is, um, I guess I'll go back here before I get into to, to, to Robert Thomas. You got a guy like Owen Power who's coming up and he gets to see that this organization is making a change and believing in their younger players and stuff like that. And that goes a long way. Uh, next, Robert Thomas signs with the St. Louis Blues. And um, 22 years old, Robert Thomas just hasn't progressed the way the St. Louis Blues has hoped, especially last year. Um, last year was just a bad year. Now, it was a bad year for a lot of young players. Uh, going through COVID and trying to the pressures of being in the NHL and getting better, and then you got COVID on top of it, is going to be is very difficult. Now they gave him a two-year, two point eight million dollar contract. This is kind of a show me contract again for Thomas. It's like we believe you can be better, and we're going to help you become better, and we're not going to put you. We you we know we're not going to. We're going to allow you to earn more money. Um, he is, like it says in the article here, um, he had 12 points in 33 games last year, which is not what they expect him at this point of his, uh, at this stage of his development. Um, his minutes decreased greatly. Um, it's difficult to see where Thomas will top out now after failing to really take the next step. And uh, that's the thing, that he is only 22 years old. Um, I do believe he he had less than, a sh oh yeah, 22 shots in 33 games. That's the one that sticks out to me. 22 shots in 33 games, that means he's not getting into the spots. That means he's not going towards the, going to the areas that you can get shots. And that is the most worrisome aspect of a player's development because at 22 years old that's the first thing you got to be trying to get to so I don't know if it's because he hasn't physically been able to mature well enough yet to do that if it's his desire at this moment um, like I said we just saw what happened with Jarrell Ann and, and you know he, uh, he he had some balls and he went and he said you know what I'm have I had these issues or whatever the case may be um, wasn't getting sleep. I mean, I'm not saying that that happened with him, but these were the sort of things that were happening last year, especially with young players. Um, so they, I, I, they couldn't really give him a long term, and this is pretty much a show me contract for him. Um, six foot, 188 pounds. He could definitely use some more bulk on there. Um, I think to be a better player, but St. Louis fans, tell me what's going on with this guy. He had 42 points in 66 games the year before. Is it just, that was just a really tough season and he's going to bounce back now. I hope for his sake, it, that is the case. I hope for St. Louis blues fans, that is the case uh, for say the St. Louis blues, because they really need a, a, an influx of young talent there. And, 
to progress without really having to do a huge rebuild in the near future. Having a guy like Thomas, who they put a lot of stock into, uh, he was drafted 20th overall. He, In all honesty, a guy drafted at 20th overall, he's not really doing that bad. Um, it, he's, It's not really that bad, but Robert Thomas has shown signs of being way better, and I think that's the thing. He, everybody knows Robert Thomas has the talent to be way better than he is right now, and I think that's the biggest thing thing so whatever it is mentally or uh to do with uh, uh work ethic or whatever i'm hoping and i'm sure st louis plans are really hoping that he's putting it together this year because he's got the talent man he's got the talent to be a significant top six uh kirill kaprizov that's the one everybody's waiting for right Mr. Kirill Kaprizov signs a five-year, $9 million a year contract. And uh, he's fine in here. Five years, $9 million on average. Okay, this was the, we were hearing about this two, three months ago. Or no, was it three? No, no probably not three. About two, month and a half. Um, it seemed like Garen just can't, kind of made it public that they've offered him 9-5 and that's what it's going to be. And it seemed like the Kaprizov camp thought, yeah, we might as well make them sweat and see if they come back and, you know, are going to go a little higher or whatever the case may be. Um, apparently, they were trying to sign into a long-term contract. He didn't want to sign a long-term contract, at least for the number that they were offering. He figured he was an $11 million player. Now, the Minnesota Wild, Garen and their brass said, one good year, man. Do we want to be going, you know, $11 million, like, say, Panarin for eight years on a guy who's had one good year? And uh, I've talked about this before. I don't know if you could have did it for 10 and a half, but... Like we were doing with Peterson, you just got to watch a guy. This guy is excitement personified. This guy's going to bring all the people in the land to the arena. I mean, when Minnesota comes into town, I'm, I'm living in Edmonton here. Um, you know, before I'd be like, yeah, maybe I'll go see the game. Now I'm like, I'm in there. I want to watch this guy play. He, his, his, Hockey sense, his speed, his stick handling, his skill, everything is absolutely top notch. Every bit as much as Panarin is. And honestly, I think if I was pressed, I probably would have gave him the eleven million for eight. Now, Minnesota fans, what do you think? You're gonna you're gonna bring up a whole bunch of players where it didn't work out and whatever the case may be. You know what? That contract's gonna in eight in seven years is gonna the way he's progressing, the way he looks right now, that contract, more than likely, I think everything's on percentage. You have to take, you have to take a risk no matter what you're doing. At the at nine million for five years, you're taking a risk. He's going to be an unrestricted free agent at the end of that five years. So what are you going to do at the end of that five years? You got to, you think. Like he's going to be 14 or 15 million. Probably by that time. We're talking five years. As the cap grows, unless the cap doesn't grow very well. Um, but if he would take 10 and a half or eight, I would have did it. Because he's going to be all of that and more. And if he's not, he's not. I mean, if he's not, he's probably not going to be worth the nine and five. And I suppose you can get out of it. But. I don't play it that way. Like, I'm not going to give, like, what Buffalo did and give Skinner $9 million a year. This is a guy that showed inconsistency his whole career. He didn't have anywhere near the skill level that that Kaprizov has. And then we're going to have to probably look at what happens now with Fiala. Because cap space isn't looking all that great for Mr. Fiala now, is it? Um for the next couple of years, 
they're going to have to lose some players to keep Fiala. Fiala's going to probably be looking at 7 or $8 million a year, I would imagine, if he can put up a really good year. And, you know, Victor Rask comes off. I guess you can let that go. Um, Marcus Foligno, you're not letting that go. you got to sign him back up. Um, I would hope not anyways. Oh, no, sorry. He's $3 million. Wrong. Looked at the wrong thing. Jordan Greenway. He's going to be looking for a significant raise. And he's. I think he's going to do well enough that he's going to get a significant raise next year. Um, what's their projected cap? I mean, of course, you have the dead cap with the Parise and Suter deal. You're looking at only $12 million in cap space as it stands right now for next year. <laughs> And you got to sign Fiala, Greenway. Uh, you got to keep on getting more defensemen. Maybe re-sign Goligoski. Maybe not. Um, it's going to get dicey here. It's going to get dicey. Um, so I guess that's why the nine they can get Fiala in and then m- maybe make a, you know, a run for Kaprizov after. But it, looking long term. At ten and a half in like the sixth year at ten and a half for Kaprizov, I willing to bet. I'd be willing to bet my more like everything I got, which ain't much. <laughs> it's a lot to me. I would be willing to bet everything I got at the in in the sixth or seventh year of that contract. People are going to be like, "Oh my gosh, that is such good value," but we'll see. We will see. Next. And final aspect is uh, Mr. Merzlikens. Now, you want to see a franchise that is willing to take some risk and believe in their players, Columbus Blue Jackets. Now, you could have haggled Merzlikens probably in the $4 million range, honestly, for what he's done so far in his career. Uh, you know, a Bernier contract somewhere in the $4 million. Anderson, um, he hasn't did a lot in the NHL yet. And um, goaltending is a position of strength for our team. Uh, this is what Kekalainen said. Being an important part of, of that over the past two seasons, and we are very excited to have agreed to terms. He is big, athletic, and tremendous passion for the game, and believe, we believe he will be an integ- integral part of our success for some time. Last season, his numbers did drop off a bit. He registered a .916, uh, but it was a struggling Columbus team. And here's another one where you can look at Elvis Merzlikens' numbers, and he's really only played 50, what, what is that, 20, 53, 61 games in his career, and he's 27 years old already. So you could easily say, you know what, we don't have enough body of work to be able to say that you're going to be a top-notch goaltender. And, uh, you know, giving $5 million plus a year for the next, is that five years? Five years. 5.6 for five years up until he's 33 is, is kind of a gamble that maybe didn't even need to be if you, you know, you really could have spun it like, you know, we'll give you a couple of years to see how you do and then go from there. But Merzlikens can say, you know what, um, forget about it. If you're going to do that, I'm out of here. Sometimes you got to take a risk and believe in a player that you believe in. If you've watched Merzlikens, and we talk a lot about this now, we talked about it with Peterson and, of course, Kaprizov, sometimes you just see a guy and go, this guy is going to be awesome. We This guy is already awesome. Um, we've had defensive difficulties. We've had, you know, some really big things happen in our organization. And Merzlikens just seems to come back and crush it. And as good as well as he can. A little bit of consistency issues, working his way into the North American system on a new team and stuff like that. But you watch his skill level, you watch his athleticism, and you know he's got in a, he's got the size. He just looks so much like a number one goaltender. You're not going to find that package too often, and I think it's awesome that they 
gave him the five years up until he's 32 years old here and took a chance on a guy. Um, I think organizations really have to do this if they really want to have that energy that you need to win cups. Sometimes you just got to take flat out risks to give the confidence to the rest of the people out there that they be you believe in their players. And I know sometimes it doesn't pan out. But I think if you're if you're going to win a cup, those risks are probably going to have to happen. Because if you keep on trying to wait and we want it to be perfect and we need you to, you know, we, we want to see it over and over and over again. First of all, your contracts are going to be through the roof. And second of all, players are just going to get fed up and say, you know what, either you're going to believe in me or not, or I'm out of here. And we've seen it with organizations over and over and over again that that's exactly what happens. All right. That's my full 42, boys and girls. That's all I have to give. Uh, come over to my channel. Sub up. Love to be part of it. Give you a little Perlo dance. I like the Perlo dance. That's the Perlo dance. I'll give you a My NHL Pearls of Wisdom necklace. Perlo coptered right to your door for your subs. I'm up to 800. Trying to hit 1,000 for all of us that are part of the stream that make help make these videos love to have you come on in okay that's my full 42 okay bye